Reading and writing data to a database is probably one of the most ubiquitous things you need to do as a software developer. And if, like me, you started out writing lower level data access routines to, to uh, read and write the data, you'll know how laborious that can be. So what if I told you there was a framework out there that did all that heavy lifting for you while at the same time improving your application's design and maintainability? I think you'd probably be interested, wouldn't you? Well, hello everybody. It's great to be back. It's great to have you back. It's great to have you with me here. This is another step-by-step -step tutorial with me, the Binary Thistle. This time we're doing Entity Framework, which is a persistence framework from Microsoft. Now, if you don't know what a persistence framework is, if you don't know what entity framework is, don't worry, that's why we're here, that's why I've made this video for you. And once again, it's a step-by-step -step tutorial taking you all the way through, right from the very start, right the way through to the end, telling you everything that you need to know about how to write an application using the entity framework. So, as always, the code will be available on GitHub, so if you don't want to follow along in the tutorial, download the code and maybe do it that way. Um, there's also a nice big long article on my website, binarythistle.com, so go along and check that out. If you like the video, please give me a like. If you've not done so already, then please subscribe to my channel. That's it, I've done all the begging I need to do. I think with that, I think we should get started. Okay, so this is a step-by-step -step into the entity framework with a code-first example in C Sharp. So our user story, as a developer, I want to map my application objects seamlessly to my database so that I don't have to worry about manual create, read, update, and delete operations. All the stuff that you'll usually do with a database, we're going to cover that here. So what you'll learn in this tutorial, so when done, you should be able to understand what Entity Framework is, understand what code-first and database-first approaches are, perform, create, read, update, delete operations on a database using c -sharp and the Entity Framework. That's really why we're all here. And understand what Link is and how it relates to Entity Framework. Our ingredients, Visual Studio, SQL Server, and 20 minutes of your time. Uh, or wireframe, so I like to do wireframes, just helps me kind of think about what I'm going to write code-wise and how the form will look on screen, all that kind of stuff. Now, just before we go on, the, the idea that I came up with for this tutorial is a small application, very trivial, called Taskmaster. I, I just think a little real-world example is probably a bit more useful than just an abstract tool that updates databases. So this allows you to add tasks to a database and update them and delete them and change the status of them. That's update, isn't it? Um, and it, of course, reads in uh, from the database those tasks as well and displays them for you. Now, be warned, this user interface is purely functional to test our database functions. It's not any in any way a, a production type approach to, to doing this, but, you know, uh, I'm not a UX designer, so Cut me some slack, please. Thank you. Our first wireframe just shows the application at startup, and you could add a, you know, some task, a new task into the task text box, give it a status, a due date, and click create, and it'll add it to the database. Um, for our existing tasks, you can select one, click delete, or you can select one, click update. The update button will change to save. Before you click save, you can edit the fields that have been retrieved from the database. You then click save and the updates will be read back, read back, written back to the database. And of course, you can cancel out of that two-step update process. A bit clunky, but it does the job. Uh, our class diagram, this is actually really important, but I'm going to kind of skim over it in the intro and we'll focus on the code. But uh, our DB context class, which is of supreme importance. If you take anything away from this tutorial, take away the idea of the DB context. It's super important. Uh, and the other two classes are our task class, which basically models our tasks, and our status class, which basically models our class, or sorry, our task statuses. And you can see there on the DM, on the TM DB context class, the properties are those classes. So that maybe gives you a hint of what db context does. It's pretty important, very important. 
Our database schema, now this will actually be created for us by Entity Framework. Oops, I've given away, I've given away the, <laughs> the surprise ending, but you can see there are, we have a, two tables, tasks table and status table. You can actually see there, there's our code classes, task and status, and yes, Entity Framework, sorry to ruin the surprise, sits in the middle and it basically translates between our code base classes to our database classes. So what is Entity Framework? Well, I've kind of given you a bit of a heads up on it just there, but in a bit more detail, it's what we call a persistence framework, and it's a layer of abstraction between the application and the database. And you may also hear it referred to as an object relational mapper or ORM. Quickly, the advantages to using any persistence framework, I'm just going to go through these very quickly. You can read up on the advantages yourself, but just to list out the bullets, Productivity, application design, code reuse, and maintainability. I've actually put a link in this video to a great article um, that somebody's written a lot more about um, each of these items. It's a good article, so I suggest you read it. So code first versus database first. Code first, surprisingly, you actually start with your application, you design it from the ground up. Possibly, possibly not, but in code first, you'll, let's say you're doing that, your new application, you think about the classes that you, your application needs to have, in particular the classes that maybe need to be persisted down to a database. So in our instance, we start with our task class and our status class. Then using Entity Framework, we do what's called a migration. And Entity Framework does this amazing thing where it takes any classes that you tell our DB context class to, you know, control or monitor or whatever language you want to use, and it migrates them to the database and actually creates an associated schema for us. So you can see here um, in this code first example, Entity Framework will migrate the task and status classes to the database and, and it creates an associated schema. And it then maintains that relationship. Database first. Very similar, but you actually start with the database first, so you'd create your tables first, or possibly you're constrained and you've already been provided with the database schema. If you work in a larger organization, you may already have a team of people that just do that. They're DBAs, they maintain a database schema, they design the schema, and as a developer, you just have to hook into what they've done. Possibly it could be to another application's database schema, who knows? But with database first, you start with the database. Entity Framework is still there, but this time you generate your code classes from your database schema. So which is best? Well, put a Swiss Army knife on the screen there. I actually got that exact model of Swiss Army knife and it's absolutely awesome. I don't work for uh, Victor Knox who make them, but they are an absolutely great product. And um, you know, I think if you ever bought a Swiss Army knife, you would never be disappointed with it. Anyway, I digress. I put a Swiss Army knife up there because, you know, it's got lots of different tools and you will use the correct one for the correct approach. And database first and code first, it's exactly the same idea. You'll use the one that's appropriate for you. So if you work in a large corporate organization uh, that has a team of DBAs or maybe even has a, an outsource agreement with another company that maintains your databases, you may be constrained. You've just got to use database first because uh, that's the way you've got to use it. It's a brownfield site. If on the other hand, or maybe you've got full control over your development environment and your databases, then you may want to use code first. Personally, I started with database first because that just made the most sense to me. But as I learn more about a code first approach, that's actually my preference now. And I'll, I'll tell you why later in the video. But of course, it's just my personal preference. I'll leave that decision entirely up to you. But this tutorial is just going to deal with code first. So some alternatives to Entity Framework, I just like to put in some alternatives because it helps contextualize things for me. The first one is linked to SQL. Now, interestingly, this is also from Microsoft. Now, linked to SQL started off in one team in Microsoft, one development area. Entity Framework was in another. They were completely separate, so they're almost competing products within the same organization, which does happen, believe it or not. But thankfully, someone saw sense and they merged the two groups and the two frameworks came into the same team, so one had to come out on top, and it just so happened to be Entity Framework, which having done, having used both, I think is probably the, the right outcome. Nothing wrong with Link to SQL, I just think Entity Framework's got a richer um, function set. 
The other one is N-Hibernate, never personally used it, but I, it's a very popular framework uh, and it's widely used. So um, if you want to learn more about that, then go to Google, type in N-Hibernate and away you go. Finally, just before we start coding, what is Link? And is it a persistence framework? No, it's not a persistence framework. What does it stand for? It stands for Language Integrated Query. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? And yes, it's not a persistence framework. So what is it? Well, it's a ubiquitous way to query data from within your code. So if any of you have done SQL, uh, which is a query language to retrieve data from databases, but it's really linked to relational databases, Link is a layer of abstraction away from that. And the power of it is that you can actually use it with any type of data source. So relational databases, XML, so long as there is a link provider for whatever data repository you're using. And you can use the same syntax across those different repositories. So, uh, yeah, as I've said there, you can use the same syntax but to query different data sources. For example, XML and relational databases. I think that's enough PowerPoint. I'm sick of talking, although I'm going to be doing even more, but I'm sick of talking about PowerPoint. I think it's time to start coding. Okay, just joking, there is one more PowerPoint slide. I'm just telling you about the next video, which is part one, building our form, in which we set up our form elements. So uh, click on the links to go to that video, and remember to click subscribe if you like my channel.